One thing I noticed about you, man, is that you always, well, no, let, me, let me not go there. We'll, we'll get there in a second. So when did you start pouring? I started pouring in my early 20s. Okay. Uh, legally. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. right. Um, yeah, in, in my early 20s. Um, and it was, so remember I was I was saying when I got done with school, I was bouncing around different jobs. Um, at okay. one point right. I had uh, I had a government job uh, working for, for customs. Um, and at the same time, I was still part-time bartending. Uh, I used to work in um, the Fairfax County Public School System for okay. the after school program. Um, at the same time, still bartending. Yeah, you know, yeah. So no matter all the jobs I did, I was still bar sending and you know it was one of those moments and this is like it's almost like something you put it into a movie I'm sitting there in little in a cubicle I just worked the shift the night before I was working at Adams Morgan and it just I'm, I'm sitting there I'm just like I, I don't I don't like this like I'm looking around like this is not me and I'm thinking about like the, all the fun I had the night before and just kind of started thinking a little bit more like long term and like I put in my two weeks where I was like it's time for me to jump into this as a career, mm -hmm. as a career, and you know it was one of the best decisions I ever made, and I'll never look back. That's dope, man. <laughs> man. You know, it's, there's a lot of value. A lot of people don't understand. There's a lot of value in recognizing that moment at that younger age. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. recognizing that yeah. moment after you already have kids and you older and you got all these responsibilities, yeah. that two weeks notice take a little longer to put it in. <laughs> you know? What I'm saying? Like, so that's dope that you recognize that at an yeah. early age and made that move. Okay, so that that that. So did you start off in a craft? Nope. You started off just no. So I actually drinks. yeah. So I actually I started off as a server and I was a server for maybe four months. Um, owner comes to me and says, Hey, we're thinking about uh, you know opening up the upstairs bar. Uh, do you want to go ahead and and run that uh, for a couple mm. of days a week? I was like, Great. Yeah, let's do it. Um, and from there, like it was, I had the opportunity to work at a bunch of different style venues. You know, uh, dive bars, nightclubs. Um, you know, really big established restaurants. Yeah. Uh, and it was through all. All those different experiences is where I kind of started learning, you know, do beer in a shot and then do a vodka soda. And then it was probably within the last, uh, the last like 10 years, mm -hmm. really a little bit more than 10 years that I really started to dig into not only just, you know, crafting like cocktails, but understanding like flavor profiles yeah. and like the balance and mm -hmm. just uh, reading your, reading your room and reading your guests, you know, and being able to just kind of put something together for them. Right. Um, that's where it really exploded for me. And then of course that also led me down the path of whiskey, um, which was that was you know probably a little over like six years ago seven years ago mm. where it was one of those things i always enjoyed it yeah you know uh, but i never actually took the time to think about like well those whiskeys rums just vodkas is gins like which one's for me yeah you know yeah. and going back to my grandfather i was like you know what let me dive into this whiskey world a little bit more and see what it has to offer mm -hmm. and, and then from there it's just been full go this is go time <laughs> that, you know and that's a, that, being a bartender is one of those things like um you know I, I cut hair as a trade when i was a kid you know up into my 20s and 30s and maybe even later every time I go home to visit my family my dad's like hey man I need you to come edge me up real quick I'm like dude I don't cut hair anymore but being a bartender is one of those things you'll always be that yeah you'll always be that yeah. I'll always be a barber I'll never Absolutely. lose that skill you know what I'm saying and the, the instinct and so on and so forth and you'll always have that as being you know say who you are you'll wear that for the rest of your life yeah that's kind of dope to me you know yeah. what I mean um, so, you know, what happens is that the whiskey gets, makes me jump ahead a little bit. So now let me get back to the point I was about to make. Um, you always have a smile on your face, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You always have a smile on your face. And what that prompted me to ask you is, you know, what's your approach? This is a very broad question, but you can answer however you want. Your approach to life. You know what I'm saying? It's, cause yeah. There's something to be said about someone you always see smiling and always glowing like that. So, you know, what's, what's your approach to life? You know, if you have any mantra or anything of that nature. Uh, you know, there's there's a couple of things. So there's, there's two main ones. Um, the first one is, and this was going back to my grandfather who told my mother this when she was young. My mother would tell me this when I was young and I actually have a tattooed on my arm. Mm. It says, nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream, mm. right? And it was really just kind of going into like, look, if, if there are things you want to do and there are things you want to try to accomplish, like go for it. Mm -hmm. Don't sit around and wait for it to happen and make it happen. Otherwise, you'll be stuck dreaming your entire life. Right. You know, uh, and so that's kind of that's that's the first avenue that I take is don't be afraid to really don't be afraid to fail as long as you learn from it. And move yes, forward. Um, don't be afraid to just kind of put yourself out there, you mm -hmm. know, with the ultimate goal, getting to where you want to be. Um, but then the second one is it's I like to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like I like to have have fun um, and I, I just I approach I approach life with enjoying every single moment 
realizing that it's it's not guaranteed to us. But then also too, like I have just kind of, I don't know if it's through experiences or what have you, my personality and the way I just approach people and just approach situations is, you know, don't overreact. Mm -hmm. You know, don't overreact one way or the other because it clouds your judgment. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you can, it, 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 as hard as it is, if you can just kind of peel back for a second and say, okay, yeah, let's 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 look at this. How how bad is it? How good is it? What can I learn from it and move on? Um, but also, you know, the the greatest cure is laughter. Yeah, it, yeah. it really is. Yeah, you know. So yeah, I, I like to laugh a lot. I like to smile a lot, and that's just kind of my approach. You know, Whis so, whiskey helps. Oh, dude, whiskey definitely helps. <laughs> oh, whiskey definitely helps. Absolutely, you know absolutely. There's a smile helps. in every bottle. You know what I mean? A bunch of them. So what's your what's your whiskey choice, man? Uh, so it depends. Honestly, it depends on my mood. Right now, um, you know, with the weather starting to get a little a little bit warmer, uh, excuse me, colder, I'm going into more like high proofs. You know, okay. Uh, anything anything above, you know, like a one or two, you know, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a couple of staples. Like if I'm going to do a cocktail, you know, one of my favorite rides for like an old fashioned, which I'll make at home, is Rittenhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard that before yeah, too. Yeah, Rittenhouse rye is a solid staple for me. Um, if I want to go more on the bourbon side and maybe do like a Manhattan, um, I do like Legion. Uh, of course, I love Angels Envy absolutely mm -hmm. uh, and then I started getting into some of like the Bardstown series as well okay uh, yes sir yes yeah, yeah. I love uh, those guys yeah, <laughs> yeah but here's something else is I also really really enjoy scotch I'm there I, with you brother I, I enjoy I'm scotch because I also enjoy cigars so I'm I am in the camp of if it's Heaty and it's smoky, and I can smell it from a mile away. Put it in my glass. Put it in the glass. <laughs> I'm with you. Though. Shout out to those guys over at Arbeg and Glamorangi. Yes. They have, well, Glamorangi is not going on the PD side, but still. Arbeg. Arbeg mm -hmm. is big time on the PD side. Mm -hmm. And um, those guys, man, we we have a really good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what's up, man. Um, let's break, and um, we're gonna come back and get into the, the thing you've got going on, man. It's a lot. Oh yeah, it's a, a lot. lot. So let's do that, man. All right, sounds good. Grab your favorite bottle. Gotta sit if it's slow. Yeah, yeah, that's the motto.